Primary biliary cirrhosis, or PBC, is the topic for this video. And PBC is essentially an autoimmune uh, disease that affects the liver. And the primary pathophysiological problem is that the bile ducts are being destroyed. This uh, disorder 95% of the time involves women and most clinical vignettes will label an age of about 35 to 70. Now what's happening in terms of the etiology is that the T cells are attacking the bile ducts and over time what happens is this leads to impaired bile formation and impaired bile secretion. Now think about that for a second. If the you have impaired bile secretion, that means that the bile is not flowing out like it should. So it stays where it is and that leads to coli stasis. And the cholestasis is the main problem that causes all the symptomatology. What happens when the bile doesn't move and stays in one place is you get these retained toxic metabolites. And these toxic materials damage the liver cells. And that essentially is what leads to liver inflammation and eventual cirrhosis. So that is, in a nutshell, the etiology and pathophysiology of PBC. Now let's talk about the symptoms. Interestingly, in about 50% of cases, there are no symptoms. The patient is asymptomatic. So the diagnosis is really made on routine lab tests. If there are symptoms in the other half, they are as follows. Some of the most common include fatigue, pruritus, which is a big one. You can also have dry mouth or dry eyes. And physical exam will also show some characteristic findings. Right upper quadrant discomfort, uh, enlarged liver, hepatomegaly. Hyperpigmentation of the skin can also happen. Uh, jaundice can occur as well. And some patients will also have something called xanthalasmas. These are basically small fatty deposits that can be found underneath the skin around the eye. Diagnosis. By far the diagnosis is the most uh, tested uh, item about this uh, medical condition and in particular a very specific antibody that is found on um, lab tests in patients with PBC and it's called an anti-mitochondrial antibody and the patient will have a high titer of this. Now the tests that are routinely done are liver function tests obviously anything that involves the liver and of course we're talking about AST and ALT but more specifically for PBC, the liver function tests or the liver tests that are quite elevated are GGT and alkaline phosphatase. So keep those two in mind. And in terms of uh, confirming the diagnosis, that is achieved with a liver biopsy. And the reason is because the liver biopsy will help you detect the actual bile duct pathology that occurs in PBC. So that is the nuts and bolts of the diagnosis of PBC. In terms of treatment, really, the first couple things are really involved in managing the problems that are already there. The first medication really just is involved in decreasing the liver damage that exists 
and that medication is Urso deoxycholic acid. The next medication really deals with treating the pruritus, which is a big part of the symptomatology, and that medication is cholestyramine. And then finally, the definitive treatment for PBC is a liver transplant, and the liver transplant has excellent prognosis, so it's definitely uh, used when possible to cure uh, or treat this uh, medical condition. So now let's take a look at some clinical vignettes to see what this looks like on a patient presentation. 46-year-old woman is evaluated for worsening fatigue and pruritus that have been present for at least eight years. Abdominal pain has not been a major symptom. Recently, she has complained of diarrhea with stools that float in the commode. She drinks two or three glasses of wine weekly. On exam, you find xanthomas on the extensor surfaces of the forearms. She also manifests xanthelasmas on the eyelids. There are dilated flank veins on each side of the truncal area. No mouse is palpable. CMP shows alkaline phosphatase at least twice the upper limit of normal, and conjugated bilirubin elevated 1.5 times the upper limit of normal. Lipid profile reveals cholesterol to be 280 and HDL to be 70. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well, she fits the uh, epidemiology, a woman between 35 and 70. She has some very specific symptoms for PBC, the xanthelasmas on physical exam, and she's got alkaline FOS that's pretty high. And all of these, in terms of most likely, point to PBC. Next, we have a 45-year-old female, has an alkaline phosphatase level that is twice the normal, and um, she is having an evaluation for pruritus. Other liver uh, function tests are within normal limits, including bilirubin and ALT. And repeat testing two months later shows no change. A gamma glutamyl transferase level, GGT, is also significantly elevated as is an anti-mitochondrial antibody titer. Hepatic ultrasound is unremarkable. Which of the following diagnosis is more likely? Well, this is a clinical vignette that is a little bit more specific with regard to lab values. you got elevated GGT, elevated ALK-FAS, and she's got pruritus, fits the proper uh, age range. And this is, again, a case of PBC. And finally, 54-year-old white female presents to your office for a well care visit. She has no physical exam, uh, physical complaints, and her last exam was five years ago. Routine lab work reveals an ALK FOS level of 300. Ultrasound of the liver is normal. You are concerned about the possibility of PBC, primary biliary cirrhosis, which of the following would be most appropriate for further evaluation. Well, of all the ones that are listed, the liver biopsy is a good choice, and so is the anti-mitochondrial antibody level if you are really thinking of PBC but of those two the cheapest one is of course C and liver biopsy is of course a more invasive test so initially the most appropriate at this time would be to do the anti-mitochondrial antibody level so the choice for this question is C